How's everybody doing today? Awesome. That's what I like to hear. It's our last day. So I'm just going to make a couple general announcements before we get going. Uh, so first off, with flash photography, if I could just ask you to turn off all of your uh, flashes on your cameras and uh, cell phones and things, that'd be great. Uh, next, if you're going to get phone calls, uh, could you take them out in the hallway? And if you could turn your phones onto, you know, ringer or vibrate, that'd be great. Uh, next, we have a microphone in the center aisle here. So if you guys would like to ask questions when you get a chance, uh, we'd like to have you use that. And lastly, we're actually doing uh, live streaming right now. So we actually have something called flipon.tv, and we actually have everything streaming live. It's actually pretty cool. If you look towards the back there, you'll actually see uh, our, one of our cameramen right now. So I'm going to get out of the way so these guys can get started. Let's have a great con. Take charge. Second. Yeah, it's, it's a second. We'll, we'll kick it off. Will, believe me, Will. <laughs> this is us. We're over there. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you move? I just, I, that's the whole panel. It's just, <laughs> just logistics. It's just, just logistics. All right, we'll, we'll kick this off. We got some stragglers coming in. Uh, <laughs> Mr. President, do you have a speech you want to make? <laughs> oh, they've made you a have huge made a terrible mistake. mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about power. <laughs> uh, so welcome to yeah. this is the the, next the Marvel thing. next big thing Thanks. panel. Thank, Thank you for coming on Sunday. Come on, let's Thank hear it. Big Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. Give it together. Oh, that's right. So uh, 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 oh, uh, let's see, Pizza Dog. Is, this is a, the Pizza Dog is killing me. Show, uh, 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 me Show the class. Show the class. Pizza Dog. Pizza Dog. <laughs> So gonna in, fight in conclusion, you. conclusion, uh, <laughs> fight the power. No, <laughs> like always, Matt Fashion's ruining everything. <laughs> God. I'd have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling editors. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's going to be on my tombstone. How many times, I know, <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. Hi, everybody. Sorry I'm late. There was a line in the women's restroom, not that anybody needed to know that, but I am giving you as much information as possible, which is what we want to do at this panel today. <laughs> Good segue. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Oh. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't really make sense. Um, this is my first time moderating a panel, so I'll give you forewarning. I might accidentally curse. Um, I might accidentally not construct sentences, and also it's a Sunday after a three-day weekend of lots of talking and drinking. So I apologize in advance, um, but I'm sure Matt will make up for it and say I something I just started right really off with awkward. armed insurrection. I was <laughs> right, right down to it, so. You okay. know, the, the wonderful thing about having you as a moderator is there are zero Marvel PR and publicity people present, yes. Yes. which means we run the show now, right. like anything <laughs> goes. There's no one here to tell us to shut up when we get too close to secrets. Like is really like. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll just tell you to shut up in general, though. Yep. I, well, yeah. I'm used to that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if for those of you who were here yesterday, we're going to do sort of a part two of uh, the Q&A session. But before we jump into that, um, I'll have the panelists introduce themselves, if they haven't already, while I was being no. Go ahead. All right, Jerry. Hi. I'm Jerry Duggan. I'm co-writing Deadpool. Uh, Brian Posehn will be here momentarily. My fault, he's late. I apologize. <laughs> he's also in line in the women's bathroom. Hi, I'm uh, Joe Keating. I'm writing Morbius Living Vampire. Have nothing to do with Brian Posehn whatsoever <laughs> in, in his whereabouts currently. But uh, thank you very much for coming. I'm Kelly Sue DeConnick. I write Captain Marvel and Avengers Assemble. And uh, Brian Poshane and I actually go way back to Friday. <laughs> um, we, we walked to the con together. I, I helped him find his booth, and then I stole his map. Uh, I'm Mark Wade. I write The Hulk and Daredevil. And uh, really? Really? Oh, yeah. uh, Was shameless. <laughs> you know, once Brian Posehn finishes wash washing my car, he'll be here any second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, hi, my name is Brian Pesane, and this is my Sam Humphreys <laughs> costume. <laughs> my name is Sam Humphreys. I write Uncanny X-Force and Ultimates. Hi, I'm Matt. I write uh, Hawkeye and uh, FF and Fantastic Four, and I murdered Brian Pochane. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, just to get this started, I would like um, to get more information on some of the upcoming events that we have planned. Um, so would we. Yeah. <laughs> God, I'm riffing here, okay? I don't, uh, they don't know that I, we actually have nothing to share. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We have a lot to share, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, Kelly, see if you want to kick it off and, and tell us a little bit about what we've got planned for Captain Marvel. Uh, crossover events. Mm -hmm. Captain Marvel and Avengers Assemble. Yeah, right on. <laughs> Woo! Uh, uh, you guys, it's my first crossover. I'm terrified. <laughs> um, uh, and, and it's going to start with a book that is not... Captain Marvel or, or Avengers Assemble. I don't work in marketing. I don't really understand this. Um, but yeah, so in, uh, in May, um, when you're looking for your Captain Marvel, there won't be one because there's going to be a book called Enemy Within Number One. And you should pick that up instead because um, that's how it's going to work. I don't understand. It's just the kickoff book for yes. the for the miniseries, so don't don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Yeah. Captain Marvel is it's it's the Captain Marvel Avengers Assemble book, but it's called Enemy Within because that's the name of the crossover. So I am made of magic. <laughs> 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 they should always give me microphones. Hey, um, as long as I have a microphone and no one can stop me, um, ladies in the room. Um, how many of you are interested in uh, uh, writing comics for a living? Raise your hands. All right, one, two, three. keep them up. All right. All right, All right. okay. Yeah. I have three copies of, um, of the script for uh, Captain Marvel number one. And one of the things that you wanna do when you're learning to write comics is compare, get, as, get your hands on as many scripts as you can and compare scripts to comics and reverse engineer and like really get in there and analyze this stuff. So I have three copies of the script and there are way more than three of you. So the first three of you after the panel to get up here and ask me for them can have them. And then... Oh, it's issue 11? Huh? Are you talking about issue 11? No, it's issue one. It's We're going to break a pool cue well. and throw it down and see who wants to write comics the <laughs> most. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies. So what are, we, what are we doing? Oh, Jello fight. Yes. <laughs> No. Uh, yeah. So so uh, so three of you uh, can can have that. Man, that is not a good system. There's gonna be like that is bad. All right, great. Speaking of which, we've also got um, after you pick those three uh, about about 15 minutes. We'll pick like two people to preview Captain Marvel 11 um, and. Guardians of the Galaxy number one. Um, wow. Nice. Very, very really? secret, top secret stuff. So only people who I can trust uh, not to spoil this information. I will take down all of your information. <laughs> and if I get any spoilers <laughs> on the internet, we will make you jello fight. We will find you. I'm, I'm little, but it doesn't mean I'm not fierce. Okay, guys? Um, okay, so Joe. Do you want to get into what uh, you've got planned for Morbius? I would love to, actually. Thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, over the course of the first five issues, I really wanted to reestablish who, who Morbius is. Michael Morbius is uh, kind of outside of everything else, because I feel like if you kind of threw you know, too much of the familiar elements, it, he doesn't really stand out. So, with, but with issue six, after that's all established, we're going to start kind of re almost reintegrating him back into the larger Marvel Universe. And when we were talking about, you know, which character it should, should be, you know, who, who, who would be interesting, and we threw a couple names. And so in issue number six and seven, we're going to do a crossover guest appearance with uh, Superior Spider-Man, which will be, uh, I'm pr pretty freaking stoked about. And that'll be the beginning of sort of now that who, who Michael Morbius is now reaching out to the larger Marvel Universe. And uh, we're going to be kind of introducing, a, kind of picking up a, a larger mystery that we've kind of planted seeds for in the earlier issues. And it's going to show that while he is an outsider, and we've been playing that up in the first five, he, there's much more going on that plays in, with, again, with Superior Spider-Man and, and, and going forward. I'm really stoked. Um, no jello fights are involved. 
whatsoever, though. <laughs> That's issue 12. <laughs> He's new. <laughs> Jerry, how many presidents, more presidents, are going to be killing? Again? They're they're all wrapped up in six. Uh, the presidents, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it. But they, yeah, that story ends, and at the end of six, we start uh, a, a big new problem for Deadpool. Uh, issue seven um, is, a, is a standalone issue uh, that Jordan D. White, our editor, had, had an idea for an issue that would have been written and drawn uh, and then shelved back in another era, and we, we planted it in the early 80s, where uh, he, Deadpool will interact with uh, Tony Stark during the Demon in a Bottle era. Um, and it, it's a standalone issue, but it, there's something happens in that that directly leads into the next arc. Mm -hmm. So seven and Tony, uh, Tony's first arc wraps in six. Uh, we have the fun in seven, and then something really messed up happens in issue eight. And there's some, there's con it's it's still funny, but there's some uh, more sort of horrifying elements coming down the road. In Deadpool, that's in Deadpool? shocking. <laughs> horrifying. Uh, so yeah, we're really excited. M Mike Hawthorne is coming on, and he, he is really just pouring a lot of love into these pages. So we're going to learn some more things about about Wade Wilson. Awesome. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Slinking, slinking venom quietly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you, Venom. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't notice me. Oh, and uh, but before uh, we're also uh, Superior Spider-Man will show up in in Deadpool too. That'll be fun. Awesome. All right, Matt, what do you got for us? Uh, in no particular order, uh, what happens when goth kids uh, join the Future Foundation? <laughs> uh, we're going <laughs> to see the Big Bang and the Big Crunch, and uh, we're going to learn secrets about Medusa. Uh, the kids are going to have a pool party. Uh, ben Grimm is going to go back to the Ancy Street. You're going to get to see the Big Bang and the Big Crunch, and it turns out in July that Ben Franklin is a Skrull. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. You know, for, for Fourth of July. <laughs> Uh, uh, and then, uh, so that's that's a Fantastic Four and FF, roughly. And then uh, next issue of Hawkeye, you get to see the last issue of Hawkeye, but from the girl's perspective. Uh, and then issue 10, uh, we introduce this assassin that's coming to kill Clint Barton. Uh, issue 11 is called Pizza Is My Business, and it is all about the dog solving a crime. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, and then issue 12 is, is then, came, uh, then Came Deadly, which is, uh, no, uh, uh, Then Came Barney, who is... Um, uh, 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 Clint's brother, so his loser, uh, washed up alcoholic brother is gonna move in with him. Um, oh. And there oh may, god. or I heard somebody gasp, like, <gasps> oh my god, <laughs> he moved. Oh my god, are you like bringing, a Barney super fan. Are you <laughs> the Barney super fan? <laughs> <laughs> they are bringing back Barney Barton. Oh my god. <laughs> And then uh, 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 Kate, uh, Kate is, and then it's an issue where Kate takes a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I'm going to try to get the arrows back in the book, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, sh I figure around then I'll be fired. So. <laughs> it's a really big earth-shattering stuff, Yeah, obviously. vacations, loser brothers, totally, yeah. Yeah. dogs solving <laughs> crimes. Changing the game. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way Stan and Jack used to do it. <laughs> Sam, what do you got for us? Uh, well, in Ultimates, we're going to see Ultimate Hawkeye's Ultimate Loser Brother move in with him. Because <laughs> <laughs> apparently, that's oh what's really going to jack up the sale. They sale. are bringing back <laughs> Ultimate Barney Barton. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best day. What? Oh, my God. Uh, in His Ultimates, name is Barney. coming up. <laughs> yes! <laughs> the only comic character named Barney. Um, in Ultimates, we have the West Coast Ultimates coming up. We have. <laughs> that's, that's not awesome. a lie. This is serious business fraction, all right? <laughs> we have the, uh, the uh, ultimate versions of Wonder Man, a new oh. ultimate vision, uh, ultimate uh, Black Knight, ultimate Tigra, and ultimate Quake. Um, and they are going to be a California based team that are going to clash immediately with the ultimates. Uh, in Uncanny X Force, uh, we've got the. Um, the, the, the current storyline with the New Mutant in Los Angeles, and that's going to lead into the, the next issue features a battle between Uncanny X-Force and Bishop in the tunnels underneath Los Angeles. I don't know if anyone here knows this, but Los Angeles does have a subway. You will see it. It is real. I didn't make it up for the comic. 
Uh, <laughs> then after that storyline, we will see uh, where Bishop was in the future, what he's been doing, why he's so different now, why he's growling all the time. I thought you went where Bishop, like he's a werewolf. Where <laughs> Bishop? <yeah>. Actually, <laughs> like, that's what an exciting place to take that character. I did not see that coming. <laughs> that's kind of. Yeah, we might go there. And then after that, we're going to have uh, Phantom X, Phantom X, Phantom X. We're going to have all three Phantom Xs together with Betsy. We're going to see what happened, why the Betsy Phantom X relationship ended so poorly. Uh, it's very, very messy. Um, and then after that, we're going to have a, a big major villain enter the book uh, who uh, will be familiar to longtime members of X Men. And I think that's all I'm going to say about that. Mark Wade, you are next. I am next. I, in Daredevil, will be introducing West Coast Daredevil. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Great Lakes Daredevil. That should have been the... Yeah. Uh, Barney Murdoch. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Barney Murdoch. He's colorblind. That's his only problem. Um, <laughs> we, uh, would, would West Coast Daredevil have to drive? <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I and I will get to this at some point in the future. In a lucid dream I had about two months ago, I plotted an entire issue of Daredevil that when I woke up was still really good. And in oh that God. and in that dream, I figured out how to do the ultimate car chase with Daredevil in it. Oh. And, oh, and wow. behind the wheel of a car. I can't wait to write that scene. So wow. we will get there. Uh, but until we get there, uh, we've got, uh, you know, we, we finally, uh, in the last couple of issues of Daredevil, have started turning over the cards and showing a little bit more about who it is that's been targeting Daredevil since issue one with some things that he's been aware of and some things that he hasn't been aware of. And this sort of spills us out for the next two or three issues as we really unfold all those layers and we see who is ultimately behind a lot of these attacks on Matt Murdock and where that leads it and how that will make his quest to help Foggy with his condition now even darker and even harder to deal with. Uh, so <laughs> kid, comics are for kids. Like they, thanks to, hey, kids, comics. Um, and then on the other side of that, we've got, uh, you know, there, there's that. Chris Somney's still knocking it out of the park every, every month with that book. It's amazing looking. Uh, down the hall in Mark Nietzsche's office, I'm still doing Indestructible Hulk. I don't know if any of you guys are following that. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But it's, you know, we, we next issue wraps up the Atuma storyline. Uh, and then after that, we have a fill-in by this young kid named Walter Simonson, Ooh. who has to come aboard. Yeah. Uh, and what a dream come true. Walt, <laughs> I wanted Walt for one issue of Hulk where they go fight Frost Giants, and Walt calls me up every day for a week. He's like, can it be, can I put Thor in the story? Yes, yes. Well, okay, you can put <laughs> Thor in the story. Well, can it be two issues? Yes. Can it be three issues? Yes. Fine. It's like whatever you want, Walt. So it's an amazing, like this was this is a big giant banner, and his team go to Jotunheim, the land of the Frost Giants, to to search for something, and chaos ensues, and Thor shows up, and it's a giant Hulk and Thor versus Frost Giants battle, and couldn't be better. Awesome. <laughs> um, and then on on the other side of that, uh, not to make it Hulk team up comics, but uh, Hulk and Daredevil really ought to hang out more often. I <laughs> says I. Uh, and, and brunches. Exa brunches, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Phone call, late night texts. Um, <laughs> so there's, you know, so that's that's one of the directions we're headed. There you go. Can you please do a gag where Hulk tries to use Siri? That's it. <laughs> 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 Hulk wear beans. Hulk <laughs> like beans. <laughs> do <Dewey> beans. <laughs> So uh, clearly we have a lot of great things planned. Um, I think Marvel Now is uh, a campaign that we're very, very excited about. If you guys have not checked it out, which I, I'm hoping you have, because you guys are here and this is a Marvel panel. Um, if you haven't, please do. Um, I think it's some of the best books we're doing. Um, I couldn't be more excited to be working at Marvel. Um, a couple of other books I wanted to call out, which we've just uh, had the first issues come out, is Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, by Brian, Brian Bentis and Steve McNiven. Um, it's a really, really beautiful book, obviously, about Guardians of the Galaxy. The Point One issue uh, just came out, I think, a few weeks ago, um, and it's sort of an origin story about Star-Lord, um, and then that kicks us off into issue one, which, by the way, I have a preview of, um, and two of you, hopefully, I'll pick, uh, pick out to read. Um, 
And then, of course, there's Nova uh, by Jeff Loeb and Ed McGuinness. Um, and that's the story of the new Nova. Um, Sam Alexander, uh, he's a young 15-year-old uh, kid and sort of what happens when he's bequeathed the Nova helmet. Um, again, another really beautiful story about um, a young kid and a coming-of-age tale of how he becomes, uh, uh, how a boy becomes a man and who becomes a hero. Um, and I, I think this is some of the, the best writing Jeff has done. So definitely check that out. And then upcoming is Thanos Rising, um, the miniseries that uh, go, delves into the origin of the very mysterious and deadly uh, Thanos. Um, Simone Bianchi, Jason Aaron, amazing. Um, this is going to tee off uh, some uh, important events happening in Marvel, so I, I highly suggest you guys read these books. Um, all right, so before, uh, if you guys want to start lining up at that microphone over there for your questions, please do, please do so right now. Um, don't be afraid. Anything goes, it's Sunday, guys. Whatever you want to ask. If those are the only two guys with questions, this is going to be a very short panel. So please, by all means, well, we, encourage we can make you to up things. Whatever yeah. you like. So come on up. Um, I was wondering. We've uh, I've been reading Marvel now. Been, been seeing lots of ads and promotional materials for Age of Ultron, but I still don't really know much about what that is or what's going to be tied into it or things. I've heard like little bits, but I haven't gotten a clear view. I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. Um. Well. I'd rather not elaborate on it, actually. I feel like a lot of our teasers are meant to sort of, um, it, it's, it's going to be a pretty important series uh, that also tees off another event, and there's a big surprise at the end of it, which I can't say anything about, um, but I think Brian Bendis uh, might be able to hint at it a little bit if you want to tweet at him. Um, but it's, I believe it's a six issue or eight issue miniseries. Yes, does anybody know? No, I, yeah, I, I should know this. I think, yeah. Ten issue? I don't know. I don't edit it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not the PR the, person. The first one's but fun. So it's, uh, it's out in a week or so, but I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of... There you oh, go. Great. It's, Do yeah, you want to sit up I, here I, I, and yeah. give some more information? But, uh, 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 Jerry, you have... You no, I just... I, I know a little bit about... I, I, I don't think you want this surprise spoiled for you. I think it's it's really cool. I, I was first working with Rick on a banger. Book. It's yeah. awesome. It's a lot uh, of just go in uh, cold you open and the, you be happy. The issue and uh, you open the first issue starts and, and Ultron has won, and that's the start of the event. That it's sort of Brian's kind of swan song to Avengers, and the art is amazing. And it's it's Brian and Hitch for the first uh, arc, uh, telling the story about what happens after Ultron wins. It's about Ultron trying to get feelings. I can say <laughs> that, right? It's about him <laughs> wanting yes. to finally yeah, it's, it's feels. Like, you know, a big, no. big banging, you know, <laughs> yes. a, a globe changing. A lot of singing. Is it an alternate future, or is every... No, it's, it happens tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So mark your tomorrow. calendars. No, I'm serious. It happens. You <laughs> open the book, and Ultron has won, and you've missed about three days of time, and, or six weeks of time, or whatever. But so the good news is you can call yeah, in sick it, tomorrow it's, it's to you, work. You've missed so. the... You know, it <laughs> opens sort of after the event has, has, has gone very badly. It opens, you know, in, in this kind of ultimate Brian Hitch, you know, post-apocalyptic landscape where Ultrons swarm the skies, and, and, and the Avengers are... Or there are a handful of Avengers left, and they're all underground. It's it's a, a a big, brutal, relentless story that begins with the bad guys having already taken over, so or the baddest of bad guys taken over. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Thank man. You. There's a Fantastic Four tie, and I'm not sure who else has tied it. I know I know that much. I know there's one. <laughs> there was one Fantastic Four mm -hmm. issue. Superior Spider-Man has a tie-in. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Uncanny <laughs> Avengers. None of my too. books. Yeah, yeah Avengers Assemble has one too. What's up, dude? Hey, been a long time Marvel fan, over 30 years. You guys are putting out some great work right now. I just wanted to cool. say that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'm a big, huge Nova fan, Guardians of the Galaxy, Avengers. I was just curious, could you elaborate at all on plans for the next year for Guardians, Nova, and do you feel like there's any room in the Marvel Universe for more than the new Nova, i.e. maybe Rich Rider coming back in the next year or so? I, I can't elaborate more than sort of what our plans are outside of the next year. Right now what we're trying to do is remind people that the Marvel Universe did get bigger um, and these are the Avengers in outer space. 
Um, so we really want to set up their story and introduce these characters and their importance. I don't think we're necessarily going to start adding on new Novas and new Guardians members, because I think that's going to dilute it more than we need to. We really want to focus on these two franchises and um, you know, make them popular again, and I think we're s succeeding in that. Um, but n there will be, um, again, this will lead to a bigger place. Um, there's going to be an important event happening, and it's going to connect all of these stories. So they are, th this is sort of the place to be if you're reading Marvel Comics right now. Awesome, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Anne. This question is kind of pointed at Kelly, and I meant to ask it yesterday in your panel, but I was very curious. Are we going to be seeing a lot more like variation in the artists up in your upcoming issues of Captain Marvel? Because for myself, I've actually really enjoyed getting to see different takes on the art and how people view Captain Marvel, because she's something different to everybody, and it's kind of really unique to get to see you know, different points of view and different lights shed on her. I would like to hire you to run my Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> would you see me after? Uh, yeah, uh, I am. I am with you. I, I enjoyed it, and and like as a writer, it's a it's yeah. a it's a it's a great. You know, one of I've been trying to focus this year on uh, like like oh I, I pick a skill and I try to work on that. And the, the thing I've been trying to work on this year is like really um, writing for. That artist, mm -hmm. so it's like it's like I, I'm not like even from the the con like what I'm writing about, not just like how we're laying out pages and panels, but like like oh, you know oh this this person excels at this kind of thing. Let's do that kind of story, yeah. you know, and um and so it's it's really fun because like you know Dex did the like doom doom doom, you know everything <laughs> Dex was like side of a van, you know <laughs> right, and then um and then we've got Andrade who looks like uh, uh like it's like. Ernie Barnes went to Europe for two years, smoked a lot of pot, came home, and decided to do Saturday morning cartoons. You know, <laughs> and um, and it's like beautiful and watercolory and gorgeous and like kind of trippy. Um, and so uh, yeah, like ev everybody, you get to do different mm -hmm. stories with this one woman's life through all of these different perspectives. So. I really enjoy it. Me too. Apparently, <laughs> some people do not think this is cool. I saw that in the last like the letter column, and I was like, I'm heartbroken because I actually yeah, really yeah. like it. So yeah, you you and me, man, you and me. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I, I uh, I'm so glad you asked that question because mm -hmm. it's I'm I'm the editor of Captain Marvel, and that is something that we've sort of struggled with. A lot of people yeah. saw the new art and were really angry at us that I we chose it. something so stylized mm -hmm. and so cartoony. And that's the reason why I printed that letter in the back to show that there are different perspectives yeah. on the art. And that's OK. There's nothing, if people don't like a particular style, that's mm -hmm. fine. Our goal is sort of to relay the intention of our story and tell, tell what Carol is experiencing through the eyes of this particular artist, who I think does a beautiful mm -hmm. job rendering her and her friends and her environment. Um, you know, and some people might not li like it, but I think that's that's what makes comics so great, yeah. is the ability to have different perceptions of the characters that we've known for 70 years. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have plans to continue to do that. Right now, Philippe Andrade is going to stay on and swing in with another artist. For the crossover in particular, we have someone named Scott Hepburn. Um, he's currently doing uh, Orchid at Dark Horse, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he's also just a really fantastic storyteller, um, really, really beautiful line art. And I think it, it's different from Philippe's, but I think it'll balance what he's done so far. Again, show Carol in a little bit of a different light. And it also works for this particular story. Yeah. He's really nice, too. I got on, on the phone yeah. with him, and he, and, uh, and he was like, I can't wait to draw the shit out of this. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so yeah. Yes, Perfect. So. Well, thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Hello. Um, yeah. I'd like to talk about my all-time favorite Marvel hero who is not around anymore, it seems, is The Punisher. In the late 80s, early 90s, he had three ongoing comics, was one of the biggest heroes out there. Mm -hmm. Everyone loved him. Now he's got three crappy movies, he got killed off in uh, the Max storyline, and currently there is no comics that I know of coming out for the Punisher. I, I can handle this. I can, uh, he, he dies in Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> I can There's actually that. A, new, a new book launching called uh, Punisher Hunts Down Brian Pesane. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I do you, uh, do, do you read Thunderbolts? Yes. Yeah, Thunderbolts. Yes. Thunder, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, he's, sure. he's it's a not a solo book. I mean, I get it. He's but. he's a supporting character in that, but sure. I mean, for but how I mean, long? His, his solo book ended like Wednesday. Yeah, yes. oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so this is. Four, four days of pain we're dealing with. Four yeah. long days <laughs> long, without long, a new. Four agon- ninety-six hours of hell. Long, long days, long days. But yeah, I just. I completely understand. Um, right now, we're trying to figure out what our plans for Punisher are. Um, I don't want to say we're not doing. I don't want to say we are. We just don't know yet. It just depends on Wait, what. Garth's, Garth's Fury book is going, which is which is. Oh, uh, that's uh, right. That's awesome. right. He, he was yeah. in three issues. I don't think he's still in that anymore, though. Well, Seven, eight, nine he's going to be in Avenging Spider-Man. M- my suggestion w- was just that, you know, if you're looking for that itch to be scratched. Oh, hey, trust me. Check I out Garth's right. Fury, you know. I you own solo every f- appearance. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, and, and I understand that, and, I, and I pre- obviously we appreciate how much you love that character. Um, but you never know. Things, a, a lot of times we say we're not going to be able to do a particular ongoing with a solo character, and then six months go by, and suddenly uh, we're doing a big launch and fanfare cool. uh, for that character. So... No plans right now, but again, just cross your fingers. You can write us letters if you want and just request it and request <laughs> it, and I'll tell people back uh, at cool. Marvel about it. All right, cool. Yep. As long as he's killing again soon. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Security. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, hey, um, what's up? I was wondering in the Thanos comic coming up, will it delve into his relationship with death at all? Yes, and it's so cool. It's very, very cool. We, uh, I, that's all I'm going to say. I love it. I absolutely love it. So It's, it's Jason Aaron, so yeah. Yeah, it's, like a, yeah. it's like a romance comic. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The opposite of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, guys. I just want to say first that thank you for Marvel Now. Cause it seems like we can't go w- every week. There's just more than one, two, three awesome issues coming out and just keeps us on our toes. So thank you for that. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the, sec- the question I have is the other week, Marvel released a teaser uh, called First with a one on it and a bunch of s- superhero names. Uh, can you reveal anything about that? Nope. Not at all. <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah. not even if it's a crossover? Or no way. Anything? I'm not saying anything. <laughs> all right. It's going to be, be amazing. Dead meat. <laughs> we would be so dead if we <laughs> said anything about that. Yeah. All right, then. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, um, hey, at the end of uh, Decimation, there was a lot of um, issues that went into sort of the science behind what happened to the mutants that were depowered. And I wanted to know if after AVX if there was going to be sort of anything going into um, how there's now new mutants and also sort of maybe touching on the fact that at least so far we haven't seen any formerly former mutants now re-powered again. Um, so I don't know. I know Sam's the only one writing an X-book. Right now on well, the panel, well, some of that we covered at the end of AVX. Yeah. Some of that we covered with with Hope and mm-hmm. and the rebirth of the mutant race. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt, you want to take it from there? Well, I, I know that w- we had sort of figured that if you know th- th- that sort of the Phoenix Force and Hex Magic sort of worked as a yin and yang, and mm-hmm. if if the the Hex Force said no more mutants, th- mm-hmm. it was the Phoenix Force that said mutants, and somehow the right. two of things kept each other in check. Um, um, and, and I think kind of treating it as a as a I don't know that the science is going to be too delved into. You sort of get pinned down by that. There's something mm-hmm. to be said, too, I think, for the characters to view it as something almost miraculous. Okay. gives you a lot of ground uh, 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 and a lot of, uh, a lot of especially with the sort of where Scott has gone into almost zealotry for his cause. It kind, mm-hmm. of, it kind of gives him uh, uh, something almost supernatural to get mm-hmm. behind. Mm-hmm. So I, I can't speak for the X office. Maybe they're, well, t- damn it, our science arc. We've just ruined it. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anybody's planning on getting too into it, but I know that when we were putting ABX together, we, we wanted it to be a sort of a big, almost cosmic kind of right. thing, this sort of uh, 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 zen-like magic event that, uh, that kind of rocks everybody's status quo and, and, and perspective. Well, in Uncanny X-Force, we're going to have one issue written by Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> 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 he's, he's really going to get into it. It's going to be awesome. And, and again, I, and, and I don't think anybody's going to come back. There's been, I, I remember talking about, like, leaving yeah. depowered, depowered. Yeah. But I, I don't know if, uh, okay. uh, just sort of for the interest of, we talked a lot about we wanted to get, like we were pitching at one point, like a Blob story, like Blob being angry, like, why aren't I back? Mm. Like everybody, yes. you know what I mean? Some kind of dealing yeah, with Because he was down to 132, he mm-hmm. looked good, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks, Thanks, man. Thank you yeah. very Thank much. Thank you. Hello. Hey. Hello. <laughs> 
Um, so my question, I realize none of the PR people are here, so I was just going to ask you guys, do any of you would like to, uh, well, actually, let me go back, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, this past October, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, Marvel titles had issue covers that were uh, for the Susan G. Komen, um, and I'm a big proponent of um, autism awareness as well. And so I was wondering, obviously it's not gonna happen next month, because since it's next month, but maybe next year, um, if you guys were looking for uh, similar charities or what other kinds of charities would you guys like to possibly bring up to your Marvel heads? I'd be happy to. I think that's a, it's an excellent idea and they're, they're always very open to that kind of dialogue, so absolutely. The other, one of the other things you can do is, if, is, is you can tweet uh, Agent M at Marvel and you can tweet Marvel in general and just and, and have you know your friends and stuff do the same and, and that is a voice that is listened to as well. I just uh, gave up my paycheck and my royalties on Hawkeye 7 to the Red Cross for Sandy Relief, so I, I, you know, that, I did that one. Yes, it was very heroic of me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm a big proponent of uh, Rachel Simmons Girls Leadership Institute. I'd love to see something done with them, but I think that that's sort of, yeah, I don't know how it, I don't know how it happens, but. What are your favorite charities? That would be right. one I would like. If uh, you if you do, if there is a particular charity that you would like Marvel to promote, or if you uh, know of a particular person that is impacted by something, just write us a letter. I mean, we had um, this one mom write us a letter uh, who, whose son was hard of hearing and deaf, and uh, he, he didn't want to use his hearing aid. Um, so she sent us, and she said he's a huge superhero fan. Um, he loves Iron Man, he loves Spider-Man. And she wrote us a letter, and one of our editors, Bill Roseman, was so moved by it, he asked uh, two of our artists in the bullpen to create a, a superhero character named Blue Ear. Um, and this young kid, Anthony, is now known as Blue Ear. He becomes a superpower, and he becomes a better version of himself because he uses his hearing aid, and it doesn't mean that he's any different. Um, and we actually got a, an amazing response. It was There was no PR push behind it. We just had this desire to help out this little kid. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of news, a, a lot of news outlets responded. Um, and we ended up taking out an ad a couple weeks ago um, with Iron Man um, talking about, like, how his armor makes him a better person and, and promoting that. And Anthony was in the office a couple of days ago, and he's this really sweet little boy, and he's wearing his little blue ear cape, and um, it was amazing. It's wonderful. So... If we have the ability and the opportunity, absolutely. It just depends on what our resources are and what we can do. But if you send a letter to at m mheroes at marvel.com, there are people reading it. We're, there's very few of us. We respond when we can, uh, but if it's worthy enough, we, we do pay attention. Um, and I appreciate you, you asking that. Thank you. Hi, I kind of had a question more on the business side of things. Uh, how far in advance do you plan for each book that's released? <laughs> uh, oh, what God. time is it now? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, there's, there's planning and doing. We plan sometimes one year to two years, especially when we're trying to plan events. It's definitely two years. Um, sometimes things change, but... Uh, we do have uh, retreats every few months where the writers get together and sort of plan out what we're going to be doing. So uh, there is organization to the chaos, if I, unless you guys don't think so, but it, 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 there is definitely, um, we have a clear plan and agenda, um, and I don't know if Matt or any of you guys want to talk about your processes as to how you guys do that. Well, yeah, at the summit, we just planned the entire Marvel Universe out through the year 60,000 AD. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope we take care of the Earth and we can get there. It's, uh, I, you know, th there's, there's a roadmap, but it's drawn in pencil, right? So yeah. we, 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 you, you know, the old joke, like, you want to make, make God laugh, tell him your plan. <laughs> uh, so it's sort of like that. But there's, there's, there's sort of big landmarks that everybody knows and everyone kind of checks in with where they're heading vaguely. And then sort of every six months, we continue to check in and see how that has changed and grown and kind of call audibles as necessary. You know, measure, measure twice, but cut once is sort of 
see if I can throw out any other fortune cookie wisdom <laughs> at the end. Yeah, <laughs> bats uh, and belfries or yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, like a deer in headlights. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, it, it's it, the, the broad beats are kind of targeted, but everybody's creative and stuff changes. And if you if you pin yourself down too early, you sort of can sap the the joy and energy out of things. So um, could be a couple more issues ahead. I, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have a few more scripts in right now. <laughs> um, all right, thank you. Oh, you have another you. question? No, uh, just oh. thank you. Oh. Thanks. Hey, is it cool if I ask two questions? Like Can you get closer to the mic? Oh, okay. okay, good. Yeah. Closer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Closer. So to no. <laughs> uh, to, to Don't Mark. make out with the mic. Oh, sure. Oh. Hello? Sorry, like right here? That's good. Perfect. Okay. Um, Mark, do you? Too close. Too close. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not going. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Now give us a beat. <laughs> like a parade float down Main Street. <laughs> So do you like writing like the, the, the like kind of more intellectual Hulk or just the like I'm gonna break everything and everybody's gonna, you know, get smashed kind of like because like it, it seems like like previously he's he was when they were separated, it was kind of more like an intellectual, like I'm gonna go into this solitary kind of thing with the Moloids and hang out. Yeah. And and like and but but like you know, I, I like that kind of like I think kind of like the that kind of like Planet Hulk or like the you know like he actually has like emotion yeah. not just like I'm gonna break everything. What what I'm trying to build to sooner than later is the idea that the Hulk that you get during any transformation is to some degree dependent upon Banner's mental state when the transformation happens. So sometimes you get Cookie Monster Hulk, you know, <laughs> and sometimes you get a little more erudite Hulk, and sometimes you get a Hulk who is led around by the nose a little bit more like he was like he was in the Defenders, and another one not. Not your, but the you know the old defenders, and or you get another one who is a little just a complete whirling, rampaging cyclone of death, mm -hmm. uh, and you never know exactly which one you're going to get. That seems to be more fun to me. I'm having a hard time pinning the exact voice down to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. but we're getting there. Okay. Um, but I love writing Banner. Oh my God, I could write Banner all the rest of my life. That's that guy's <laughs> an untapped well of potential. That guy. So. And then my other question is just like with the with the guardians and like with with the more of like you you say you're trying to build this Marvel universe is there going to be more like crossovers then like I mean like because the the Fantastic Four hang out with the Inhumans a lot with Crystal and stuff but but like is there going to be like more like global like you say Thanos too like is this all going to kind of come together within the whole universe or is it going to be mm. Gosh I wonder if John Hickman is thinking big and cosmic. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, we'll show you his notebook. Um, it's y yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you seen yeah. the movie? Yeah. You, you yeah. will be well fed. Very yes. soon. Yeah. Have There's you seen Have you seen the movie Seven? Yeah. And you see, it's John Hickman's notebooks. Yeah. It's just, that's, <laughs> it's just, it's just. So we're taking now. you somewhere for sure. Okay. Um, so that's why we're we're pushing these books. I just want to pause real quick. Do we want to pick two people, Kelly Sue? Yeah. Uh, hands up. Who wants to read Guardians of the Galaxy? Captain oh, Marvel? Oh, oh my over God. Over here. No, 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 you can't <laughs> read it. Sorry. Uh. You gotta buy the comic thing. Uh, Wait, let guy, let the guy who just asked the question, the cosmic question, read Guardians. So, what? Yeah. Yeah. Let cosmic guy oh, yeah. who just asked the question read Guardians. Hey, cosmic guy, where are you? Yes, yeah, you. <laughs> no, the other guy who asked the cosmic question. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> cosmic question. Um, why don't you come up right here? Uh, Captain Marvel, come on. You, 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 right, looking at me. Look at me. No, you, you. That's the, so that's the next 20 minutes. You're going to watch them read. That's going to be. <laughs> everybody just get comfortable. All right, nice guy. Step up. We'll yeah, 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 we'll keep we it rolling. No, okay. sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Okay, um, I'm a long-time Marvel fan, 20 years. And oh I'm now a five-year uh, mega Deadpool fan. I had two questions, but unfortunately, Deadpool just barbecued Brian Passan, and they're serving him at Subway. Um, <laughs> oh. He'll grow so, back, unfortunately. I know, I know. <laughs> So um, I guess my, my other question would be, uh, it, with the Deadpool video game, is that going to actually tie into the video or the comic books, or is that just separate? You know, no, you know that, now that, that you that say was that, well, well on its way uh, before uh, we. You're talking we about the video game? Board. Yeah, the one that's coming out. Uh, yeah, it's it's that's it's separate. I mean, we don't really have um, publishing doesn't really talk about uh, or is not involved in the creative decisions um, for our gaming side. Uh, but I, I do believe it's two separate worlds. Um, but I did see D 
to use her for it, and it looks awesome. It's very, very cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Keep Thanks, on Deadpooling. Cool. So I've uh, been reading 30 plus years now, so it's um, you know, fantastic to see new and elder writers, I guess, or more seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> more t- <laughs> He means you, Mark. <laughs> I wasn't necessarily Older talking writers. to you. <laughs> no, just, uh, you know, it's great to uh, see this tradition, but I Thank think you, whippersnapper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 38, you know. It's like, you know. Beat you with my no, walker. But, uh, Go ahead. No, yeah, really. Um, no, it just, I, I think one of the things that Marvel is missing now, mm-hmm. now, yeah. is the timelessness of, I think, actually, your series, um, Indestructible Hulk is kind of touching on it, mm-hmm. but Daredevil and Daredevil's killing it, mm-hmm. where you have kind of the classic feel mm-hmm. of it feels more like mm-hmm. the classic Daredevil, even pre Frank Miller days. You know, it's like more of the you know you read the first twenty issues and it I mean it feels more like that Daredevil kind of hitting the Joe Kelly you know where it kind of goes back into the sense of humor. There's still darkness, but you know it's just like I mean. It feels like Marvel is kind of in an attempt to be timely, no pun intended. Uh, huh. It's um, it's missing. It's it should be Marvel always, not Marvel now. Well, I, I, just, but see, and I, yeah. I grant your point. I, I would. I, there are two things to bear in mind. That's something that I have to bear in mind all the time too. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, everybody's era, uh, everybody's golden age of what they think Marvel comics should be and right. these characters should be is different. Oh, yeah. And, no, and, no, I'm, and I'm with you. And, and, and I think that the trick is, and I think that, that we do this actually pretty successfully at the company, is it doesn't, there, you have to be very careful mm-hmm. to not get the stink of retro on your book. You don't oh, get yeah. the sense that, oh, you're just turning back the clock and making it, making comics like they oh, good like they were when Mommy was still alive. Um, you don't want to do that. That's a dark yeah. joke, but no one laughs. Wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. But, uh, but at the same time, I think you know the, the, the trick is really just take yeah. it back to core concepts, take right. the character back to center, and move out from there, which is a big part of what Marvel now was. I know we all mm-hmm. sat in you know in the rooms and we talked about our first issues and we talked about how to sort of it, go back to first principles on these right. characters um, and 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 do that eternal juggling act mm-hmm. of giving the character forward momentum without changing the character so much that he becomes unrecognizable. Well, on in that sense, even changing the origins. I mean, yeah. isn't that I mean it kills the back catalog it, yeah. and I'm not a retailer. Does it? So it it yeah. does I've talked to several retailers. Yeah. It Wait. does kill the back catalog, especially Marvel doesn't really, you know, they used to have the editor's notes that, you know, you, like right. when they're referring to a, spe- a spe- specific issue. Yeah, but that's, what, you know. yeah, but yeah, we didn't, couldn't look it up on our phone <laughs> yeah, while no, we were, when we were kids. That's true. Well, actually, I'm curious. I mean, what origins have we... Yeah, I, 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 was, I didn't mean to be. Uh, I'm not uh, picking. I, I literally don't understand yeah, what you mean by um, it kills like, the back catalog. Like Iron Man now, yeah, he's in Saudi Arabia versus yeah, but, versus and Vietnam, Punisher. So Punisher doesn't in Vietnam anymore. That? But that doesn't. People, I mean, the, the yeah, Punisher but, isn't a. That's a time issue. That's not. That's well, just about. But the, thing the, the, is, the Fantastic Four didn't yeah, launch their rocket in 1961. But mm-hmm, but. Yeah. No, I understand, yeah. and and you know there was kind of the accepted sliding time. Sliding sliding time. You know where it was like four years was for one year and. And they've kind of abandoned that. In, and yeah. in, in Deadpool, we used a uh, an editor's caption box to remind everyone that uh, Ben Franklin had slept with Doctor Strange's girlfriend recently, <laughs> <laughs> back yeah, in the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing true. is ever gone forever, right. Right. you know. And and the Marvel Now stories yeah. that I think we're all uh, proud of. Yeah. I, I don't think it invalidates. I, I guess I guess it's kind of frustrating when yeah. the writers <laughs> yeah. when the writers Sorry. or writers or editors complain about convoluted stories lines when they're the ones that are convoluting it. I think we're... I, Brian Hossein, yeah. everyone. Sorry. What are you guys doing? <laughs> What's going on in here? Is it my birthday? <laughs> everyone thought you were dead, Brian. Yeah. This is shock. Or in yeah. line at the Just having late breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> I'm just glad they weren't clapping for me. So, you know. Just past the nick of time, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. That's um, all the time we have. Bye, everyone. <laughs> yeah. I, I, just to close out real quick, I think, I think yeah. that... I, your point is well granted, and I think it's something that we're actually working much harder on okay. to make sure that the stories are self enclosed. I, I, I will give you this, for instance, as an example. I know there's a big debate in the room with the way of AVX ended. Mm-hmm. Is do it do we do we do it in such a way where it feels like a springboard off into another into another mm-hmm. event, 
or do we do something unusual yeah. for us, which is have an event that has an end to it, yeah. <laughs> like an guess, actual cap yeah. to the end to it, and it feels like a complete story. And uh, and that's you know I think we're a lot more uh, you know across the board mm -hmm. as writers at Marvel, I think we're a lot more yeah. interested in telling these stories that we can hand to anybody, mm -hmm. and you get it. Yeah, right. I mean I, I think I, I am very confused, honestly, by uh, because. Uh, I, I, if I'm understanding your question mm -hmm. right, w w you're, you're suggesting um, more continuity ties. Um, which, which it, from, from my continuity ties, no, just, I, I think, so I think like just more o acute awareness of, yeah, of continuity stuff. Yeah, exactly. yeah. and uh, reading, reading articles like um, Bendis saying, you know, it's like, I don't care what came before as long as it's an interesting story for me to tell. And, you know, it's like, I think that's where DC has got it wrong now. Where they're, you they're know, right there. By the way, I'm just saying. Okay, just, uh, just, just be oh. watch your, No, I, yeah. no, I think. Th yeah, you're on. Not you guys. The other no. DC. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smoke! This panel's gonna cross over with that panel. <laughs> <laughs> crossovers never work. I thought crossover under company crossovers weren't allowed anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Although yeah. we we did get the five minute. Uh, yeah. We got yeah. the yeah. five yeah. minute. Yeah. So, so, the next question. Sorry about it. Yeah. It's just you. DC. Thank you for your question, though. Yeah. Really appreciate it. It's a good dialogue to have. Um, we're gonna have to go rapid fire. We've got about five minutes. Somebody asked Brian Posehn a question, so he's included, and it was purpose for him to be to. here. <laughs> On the spot right now. What do you, what do you go. have to say? Uh, I'll go really quick. I just had a question with the Marvel Now rollout. I was wondering, is there any plans for a Black Widow Natasha Romanoff solo book? For, for um, uh, that's a great question. Romanoff, a I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> who, who do I tweet? Who do I send threatening letters to? Uh, uh, M, M <laughs> heroes at marvel.com. Marvel yeah. I, 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 Brian I, M. Bendis. Uh, <laughs> I will say if you like he, female superheroes, uh, you'll love us, is all I'm going to say. So yeah. I'll take that. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Nice work. Next question. Deadpool's getting a sex change. <laughs> <laughs> Heard it here first. Very progressive. <laughs> um, I was just wondering with the Thanos series is Squirrel Girl going to make an appearance? He's going to be her babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I approve. Nice. <laughs> Nanny. Nanny was the gym. Just what do you got? Hi. Uh, question for Sam. When I read Uncanny X-Force 1 and 2, mm -hmm. it felt like I was reading an episode of Cowboy Bebop or Samurai Champloo. Like it was built almost right. around like a soundtrack. I'll take that. What were you listening to when you were writing these? Uh, a lot of stuff. I, I listen to the quartet of Rolling Stones albums. That's uh, Beggar's Banquet, Sticky Fingers, uh, Exile on Main Street. What's the fourth one I'm missing? Was it Suit? No. What's the fourth one in there? Let It Bleed. Yes, thank you. The one that I titled the arc after. The arc is oh, yeah. called Let It Bleed. I listen to that over and over again, plus a lot of new stuff like Sleigh Bells, Christine. Um, I'm blanking, but thank you. Thank you for noticing. I'm loving the series. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, bud. Oh, thanks. Hi, um, I know that we just had uh, North Star marry his agent, but I was just wondering if there's any more gonna be like giant queer story arcs in the making, uh, s plot spoilers, anything. Um, Maybe uh, Miss Captain Marvel becomes a lesbian and starts dating Moonstone, I have no idea, but I'm, I'm just. We've got, hey, uh, if. Uh, Carol and Jess are really good friends. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like Gail and Oprah. Yeah. Did you um, also read Fearless Defenders as well? Fearless so. Defenders Fearless and yeah, yeah. Uh, Young Avengers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. um, I, I are love cool places. Wiccan. Yeah. We're gonna, if we do it, we're going to plan it right, is cool. all I'm going to say. All right. Do it. Now. Got it. Yes. With you. Or else. Why doesn't everybody have your enthusiasm? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. yeah. Last I, question. I'm just expressing my undying love for the new Hawkeye series because it makes me have so many happy feels. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for writing it. You can, uh, you can pick your check up at my table. That's J13. You timed that perfectly. Um, and with that, thank you very much for attending, guys. Thank you for it's coming, been such guys. a hey, pleasure. Thanks. Please keep checking out Marvel Now, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, my ladies, we're going to meet right outside that door, okay? I came all the way here for this. I'm just sticking around.